So you've come here because you'd like to improve your English and you're aiming for a very high band score. Well, you have come to the right place. Today we're going to be giving you some sample answers. These are answers that you should be able to adapt to any type of question that you find in the IELTS. Hi, my name is Phil and welcome to this video. You're watching the IELTS Grind. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber yet and you've seen previous videos, hey, why not subscribe now? But don't worry, if you could just give us a like later on, that's going to be fantastic as well. Now, we're going to be looking at some sample questions. These have been inspired by a great book. It's called Cambridge IELTS 14, and it's one that you can buy for yourself. It has many past papers, uh, in four past exam papers, in fact and you're going to find it a really good study aid. Okay, so let's look at those questions and my sample answers, which I hope you still and adapt for yourselves. Let's do it. Let's consider, first of all, creating a nice home. Do people need to spend a lot of money to make a home look nice? Uh, not necessarily. Um, take IKEA, for example. It's a very popular world brand and yeah, you can buy a lot of stuff, not for a lot of money. Uh, the only thing is the quality may not be as good as if you were working with traditional artisans. So it's really questionable. It's perhaps a question of taste. But I've furnished many homes in the past on a shoestring budget. So you said that nowadays it's possible to make a home look quite nice while still cheap. Has this always been true? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. Um, only last week my time machine broke down. Um, but from my knowledge of history, uh, I would say that a lot of people faced a lot of privations in the past and perhaps having the latest sort of uh, season for the, uh, for the uh, decoration wasn't the priority. Perhaps food was more important, uh, clothing your children. It's really something that I don't think I'm an authority to answer. Why do some people not buy many things for their home? Well, I think perhaps there are two reasons that someone wouldn't purchase many items for a home. Um, the first one might be motivated by personal finances and the other might be uh, more of a sort of personal preference. What I mean by personal finances, if you're not very rich, perhaps you're not able to buy many items for your home. On the other hand, uh, if you are a little bit richer, perhaps you uh, subscribe to the minimalist sort of approach to decorating your home, in which case you probably wouldn't buy much furniture or other items and it would be a bit bare and uh, not very homely in my opinion in the house. Let's focus on the second thing you said, personal preference. Do you think this minimalism is quite widespread in your country? I don't think so. Um, well, just from my own personal sort of experience of family and friends, um, there is quite a phenomenon uh, which is hoarding, which means keeping lots of items, not throwing them away, uh, you know, keeping newspapers instead of discarding them after you've read them. And I think this is more widespread than uh, minimalist uh, sort of approaches to furnishing a home. It's quite sad because living in that environment uh, is not very nice, I would say. Why do so many people care about having a home that looks good? Um, I think, again, there, there might be two factors, at least two factors. The first one is how it makes you feel. I know that if you come home from a busy day at work and you come home to a very pleasant environment, it helps you to relax. So that is definitely important. It's definitely something I would put high on my priorities. Um, on the other hand, well, in fact, actually, I think that is the most important thing. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, just in my own experience, that's the most important thing. Let's move on and talk about different types of homes. What are some of the most popular types of accommodation that people live in in your country? So, um, being from the UK, we're much more, we're homeowners. This is a very important thing. 
and often when you're going to buy a home, the plan is to buy a house. Uh, even in a very um, densely populated city like London, most people that buy um, a home is going to be a house. Um, however, there are flats and normally what happens is you start with a starter home, which may be a flat or a small house, and you upgrade as you become richer and uh, have more finances. Is this trend generally true throughout the rest of the world? I would say that this trend is the same in Western cultures. I know that from my experience living in Asia, which is much more densely populated than places like the United States or Australia, it's just not possible to buy houses and people have to settle for what they can get. However, um, there is a trend for sort of getting the most sp uh, space out of uh, the spaces that's available. So everyone adapts to their own society. If money didn't matter, do you think that most people would choose to live in a flat or a house? Um, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, definitely a house. Uh, I like to have a lot of space. I like to be able to move from room to room and have dedicated uh, rooms within the home for different functions, such as an office, uh, an entertainment room. Um, but then again, maybe I'm in the minority. Do older people and younger people want to live in different types of homes? I wouldn't say that different generations have different aspirations when it comes to accommodation. Um, I think it's more of a financial burden. When you're young, especially in today's society, um, with the demand that there is for homes, you're just not able to buy your dream home straight away. Uh, many people struggle to get on this property ladder. But I would say if you sat down uh, a retiree and a new graduate, they'd probably be looking at the same type of home. Thank you very much. That's the end of the speaking test. So, as I said, we have used Cambridge Arts 14 to inspire us to create some questions. Now, the thing is, we didn't want to use the questions from the book because we don't want to rob you of the opportunity of practicing with them yourself. Now, we really do recommend that you go and buy this book. It's a great study aid and it's created by the people that create the arts exam. That's really important to use official study materials. So if you'd like to find out a little bit more, there is a link in the description which will take you over to Amazon and you'll be able to buy that book and get it delivered right to your door. Sounds great, right? So uh, don't forget, if you've enjoyed the video, please give us a like. It really does help us. If you've got any questions at all, any comments, leave us one in the comment section. And uh, why not subscribe if you're not a subscriber? And I'll see you in a future video very soon. Bye-bye.